to have you with us. Uh, just a very practical notice that to let you know that this evening's meeting is being uh, recorded. That's one, because we've actually had so many people wanting to be part of this evening and Zoom limits us to 100 and uh, there are more than 100 want to be part of that, which is uh, a credit to uh, the idea of the whole synodal process. So, and also uh, because it gives us the opportunity to capture what's shared this evening that will feed in to our own synodal journey, both for the Universal Synod and for, the, uh, for our own synodal journey as the diocese. Just a couple of practical rules, all of which you're well familiar with now uh, in these years of Zoom. First of all, that please stay muted as Sister Natalie uh, is speaking and, and during the evening. And as the evening unfolds, by any by uh, whatever wish, whenever you have something that you wish to say, please do capture it on chat for everyone. And all of the chat will be captured as well. And that will allow us to, again, feed in your comments to the listening process as part of our, our synodal journey. Uh, if you have any particular questions that you would like uh, me to ask on your behalf to Sister Natalie after her presentation, then please do uh, send them as a message on chat direct to myself and I'll make sure that they're fed in. If we can have the slide, please, John, with the Asumas prayer. And uh, Bishop John, I wonder if uh, you would kindly unmute yourself and uh, while we stay muted, if you would, with us, recite this prayer. Certainly, be a pleasure. Good evening, everybody. We pray. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Bishop John. And to introduce Sister Natalie and to uh, bid her welcome, albeit via Zoom, to our diocese today. Uh, Sister Natalie, you've uh, made such an impact that I notice you have an entry on Wikipedia. And if you'll forgive me, I discovered looking at it today that you were from Fontainebleau uh, near Paris. And the connection between the Synod and our Diocese of Salford takes us back to France because on the 6th of June, 1944, a priest who was a chaplain in the Royal Navy called Thomas Holland landed uh, on D-Day on the Normandy beaches and 21 years later in St Peter's uh, during the Second Vatican Council he was one of the bishops who suggested that the experience of collegiality should be continued in a stable form and that gave rise to the Synod of Bishops and at that time he was coadjutor bishop of Portsmouth but he moved on to become our own bishop, Bishop of Salford and uh, one of the things I'm grateful for is he's the one who accepted me and sent me to seminary. Uh, sister Natalie is a Xavier sister, a congregation of Ignatian inspiration, and she worked in assisting young people in their spiritual journeys and was involved in the Synod for Young People. And almost a year ago, uh, she became the undersecretary, one of the undersecretaries of the Synod of Bishops. And I did notice also, uh, Sister Natalie from Wikipedia, that one of the books you've written is The Spirit Renews Everything. So our prayer today is The Spirit Renews Everything, even the Diocese of Salford. So over to you, Sister Natalie. 
Yes, thank you so much, uh, Father Paul, for your kind welcome. And uh, thank you also, uh, Bishop uh, John, for your introduction and being there. And thank you all uh, for this journey together through Zoom. <laughs> That's a new way to journey together, we have learned. I'm truly grateful to connect with your diocese uh, with such a uh, a link also with uh, the Council Vatican II, you just, uh, you just remind me. <clears throat> so uh, I will try to share with you the, something of the experience, the vision of synodality and of this uh, synod and synodality that is happening all over the world. So I really greet all of you from Rome. And to do my presentation, I will use a PowerPoint now that I am trying to share. So I think it's it's okay. You can see. Uh, yes, you can, you can see it. So um, first of all, as uh, as you know, um, a synodal church is a listening church. And it's truly, uh, the synodal process is truly uh, uh, for all the people of God. And we can say, as stated in the preparatory document of this uh, synod, 21, 23, that the church of God is convoked in synod. So we are all already all over the world on this path the synodal past, we, we have been uh, convoked by uh, Pope Francis with all the church uh, to journey together uh, during those <clears throat> two years. And uh, since the opening of the synod that was in Rome on October 9, and in uh, every diocese on October uh, 17. So uh, uh, just after the the opening of the synod, a good number of theologians, and especially I quote here uh, Monsignor Piero Coda, who is the Secretary General of the International Theological Commission, who emphasized with also theologians that we are living the most important historical event since Vatican II. The fact that the whole church, all the baptized, are convoked uh, in a synod. It's truly the first time in 2000 years of uh, church history uh, that a synod is called, involves the entire uh, people of God. So that's why it's considered uh, as the most important ecclesial event after the Second Vatican Council. And it's truly a, a, a synod on synodality. Well, you know, the title is for a synodal church communion, participation, mission. It's not about a topic like others, like a synod on youth, a synod on family, because it's about the deeper identity of the church. It's about us together as a church, as communion uh, and mission. So uh, it's, uh, very, we can say we, we are living this together, this uh, historical uh, event. Uh, and we, we can be aware that uh, maybe we don't know yet where we will go through this process, but uh, it's, it's something um, very, I, I can say, uh, very enthusiastic to be part of this uh, process altogether. And to begin, I would like to invite you, because you are, uh, you are already <laughs> on this road, on this uh, synodal journey, when you think about your experience of synodality or you think about this word, this notion of synodality, what word or image comes to your mind? So uh, to, to have this style of the synod that is the style of a spiritual process rooted in prayer, into silence, I will give you now one minute in silence just to think about uh, uh, your, what you have already, uh, what is already your experience of synodality, or what do you think when you, when you uh, look at uh, this perspective of synodality? And I invite you to write one word 
one image in the chat. So we take one minute in silence and I invite you to write one word or one uh, image in the chat. Thank you. I will just read uh, togetherness, trust, hands in hands, talking shop, exciting unity together, exciting but scary, listening to the Holy Spirit community, inclusive, discernment, discovering, listening, discerning, collective awareness, disappointment, exchange of ideas. Seeking, listen, all body of Christ, concern, scary, renewal. Thank you. Uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to continue to share. We, we can see, and it's normal, that some are very enthusiastic, uh, can say some things, there are also some fears, some concerns, because it, it's a process of uh, transformation, of conversion. We can say that um, the experience of uh, synodality is, uh, I would like to share with you here, uh, what I have uh, listened to, uh, and what was also my experience, as I was lucky to be part of the Synod on News, to take part of the Synod of Bishops. And then when I was doing a research on synodality, I have listened to many who have taken part uh, to an experience of synodality. And what, what they can say is that synodality is a practice. It's a different way of being church. Uh, synodality is the church's way of being itself and of living its mission into this world. It's linked to mission and communion. It is related to the experience of being a community that reflects God's way of being. Synodality is a process, a spiritual process. Synodality is a path of conversion and open path. And maybe that's something very important. It's that it we, we discover synodality through the experience of synodality, through the practice. It's not enough to talk about it. The, the aim is to experience it, but we don't know uh, in advance if we are really open uh, to be guided uh, and led by the Holy Spirit as the logo of the synod is uh, expressing. So it's an open pass. That's why uh, it's, it's not so easy because we don't know uh, before where uh, the Holy Spirit will uh, lead us. And uh, it's synodality is a way of life, of collaboration and participation. And we can see communion, participation, mission as the three keywords uh, for uh, synodality. And it requires a synodal process, requires synodal leaders with a vision and practice of exercising authority as a service in a, in a style, and we will come back to that, of servant leadership and collaborative leadership. So we can say synodality is mainly an experience and a learning by doing. So it, it's not a problem. Uh, we discover uh, synodality through the path of synodality. And uh, the most important is to, to begin to walk, to continue to walk. Uh, and it's through this experience that we will discover more and more synodality. 
And as this Synod 2021, 2023 uh, has been uh, launched uh, in October, everywhere in the world, uh, we can see how the spirit of synodality is blowing around the world. And uh, you are already on the process of um, doing this uh, synodal consultation in your diocese of Salford. Uh, but uh, it's happening, you know, in different ways all over the world. And I want uh, to introduce my purpose just to share a few, so some images, um, some kind of, to give you some little seeds of synodality that have been planted uh, in uh, different parts of the world and the way uh, they are expressing synodality like, uh, you know, open doors, hello. It's, it's, it's a way to be a, a welcoming church, an inclusive church. We can say that a synodal church is a church with open doors, uh, welcoming uh, everybody. Uh, it's uh, walking together, journeying together, all generation together. And we can see that this logo uh, try to express the fact that uh, as a church, as people of God, it's uh, all the baptized from uh, the youngest to the, uh, to the oldest. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the, the synod has been translated in so many different languages. And we can see that it's a way to be together in unity but we are not all together. Uh, it's a vision of unity through and with differences. But uh, in, a, in a synodal church, all are protagonists, all are working together, uh, whereas their uh, age, their gender, their vocation, their position, their responsibilities, uh, their uh, role, uh, you can see that you have, you have the bishop, you have uh, an old man, you have the youngest, you have someone with disabilities. Uh, that's the uh, synodal church. And uh, as I said, it's the most important about synodality is, is not only to, to understand uh, and to try to, uh, to talk about synodality, but truly to live it. It's the synod is about, it's not just to have a synod, as Pope Francis uh, said, it's about becoming a synod. It's a call for each of us to become a synodal uh, Christian, uh, a synodal baptized. Uh, it's, it's not just to, to do an event as a synod, that could be a diocesan synod or a universal synod, but through this institutional form of a synod, that is, for instance, uh, a diocesan synod or a synod of bishop, uh, the aim for today is truly the synodalization of all the church at all uh, the level. And we are all uh, called, uh, we are all responsible for implementing uh, synodality. And uh, as you can see here, uh, you have all the generation and the youngest who have this T-shirt with the logo of the Synod as a way, you know, to, uh, to, to be involved. But uh, synodality needs uh, some training. Some, uh, it's about a way. Uh, we have to learn synodality and to do the, the synod, uh, the synodal process in all the dioceses, it's good to have uh, facilitators, people who are more in charge. That's why we have called uh, each diocese to have a synodal referent and preferably a synodal team. And it's also called that in each parish, you could have uh, a synodal uh, referent or a synodal team and some facilitators help uh, to uh, implement 
this uh, synodal, uh, synodal process. So that was just to give you a kind of, uh, you know, first approach through this uh, uh, creativity. Uh, you know that your uh, neighbors in Ireland, the Church of Ireland, has, um, is, is preparing a national synodal path and they have articulated this global synod with their own national uh, synodal path that uh, they, they begin through this uh, universal, uh, universal synod. So uh, I, I know that the candle of synodality is already uh, uh, lighted in your diocese but that this time together tonight to the foster uh, uh, the, the fire of synodality, because what I can say, when you have experienced synodality, you experience the fruits of synodality, their fruits, uh, the, the fruits are the fruit of, of the, we can say of the Holy Spirit. It's joy, uh, missionary uh, uh, in, impetus, uh, peace, um, experience of communion. And so you, you don't want to keep this light for you, but to share to share it with every everybody. Uh, so that's uh, the call for today to reflect together, uh, to imagine uh, and to discern together the path of the church for the future. And that's why the Holy Spirit really needs us and needs each of us, because the major challenge for this for synodality and the call for synodality is to involve uh, all the diversity of the people of God, all the all the baptized. So uh, to um, continue uh, to share about this uh, experience and vision uh, on synodality, I would like now to share with you a video that has been uh, prepared by uh, a diocese in India that is very well uh, done about this synod on synodality. Uh, so I will now share this uh, video uh, that in, and in a few minutes, you will have the, the key uh, uh, features to understand what is a synod and what is a synodality. You matter. This is exactly the cry and belief of the Universal Church in this Synod on Synodality. Did you know that in October 2021, the entire Church entered into a Synod? Pope Francis opened the Synod in Rome and every diocese across the whole world was called to celebrate the opening of the Synod at the local level. The theme for this Synod is for a Synodal Church, Communion, participation and mission. Don't worry if you've missed the beginning. We are here to help you catch up because this synod is going to be unlike any other. From 2021 to 2023, it will be a journey of sharing, reflecting and listening at all levels across the entire church. But hold on, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let us first understand what is a synod? A synod is a gathering, traditionally of bishops. The word synod comes from the Greek synhodos, meaning the same way or the same path. Synods were very common in the first centuries, giving bishops the opportunity to meet and discuss issues of importance for the life of the church. The institution of the synod of bishops was established by Paul VI on September 15, 1965, in keeping with the request of the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council to maintain the collegial spirit fostered by the Council. Since then, synods have been organized every two or three years, bringing together bishops, experts and various delegates to discuss different topics. In each case, bishops vote on a final document. 
Then the Pope writes his own text called an apostolic exhortation to open new pathways and shed new light on what was discussed at the synod so that it can radiate across the entire church. So what is synodality? Synodality is about journeying together. This happens through listening to one another in order to hear what God is saying to all of us. It is realizing that the Holy Spirit can speak through anyone to help us walk forward together on our journey as the people of God. The point is not that we take two years to understand some new buzzword that will soon fade. Synodality is no passing phase. It is a call to be a new way of being church. In other words, it is walking together. The very heart of what the church is all about. St. John Chrysostom said that for him, church and synod were synonyms, since the church is all about walking together. In this sense, synodality is a way of renewing the church from her deepest roots in order to be more united with one another and better carry out our mission in the world. In simpler terms, a synodal church is a church that listens. As Pope Francis stated in the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the institution of the Synod of Bishops, it is a mutual listening in which everyone has something to learn. The lay faithful, the bishops, the Pope, all listening to one another and all listening to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, in order to know what He is saying to the Church. What's special about this synod on synodality? This synod is totally unprecedented for at least three reasons. It is no longer only a one-month synod of bishops, but a two-year synodal process for the entire people of God. All the baptized. All are invited and no one is to be left behind or excluded. It is a synod that aims on giving the entire church a lived experience of synodality. It's not just about filling in a questionnaire but gathering the fruits of what the Holy Spirit is saying to us here and now. The aim of the Synod is not just to talk about synodality, but to put synodality into practice, starting now, in every diocese, parish and country across the whole world. This calls all of us, at every level of the Church, to renew our way of being and working together moving forward. So what can you do? Find out what's going on in your diocese and your parish to experience the synod at a local level. Each diocese is called to facilitate local synodal meetings to involve all the faithful in this journey undertaken by the entire church. Since the entire purpose of the synod is to listen to everyone, even children, trusting that the Holy Spirit can speak through anyone, Let's start by truly listening to each other, especially those who are in the margins of our churches, who are forgotten, ignored or not listened to. If you are an elder or a person in position, listen to those in your care. If you are a parent, hear what your children are trying to communicate to you. If you are a priest, pay attention to what your parishioners are voicing. If you are a superior in your community, Listen to what the young ones are struggling with. Remember, if you want to be heard, you must also be willing to listen. And finally, pray for the whole church. Ask the Holy Spirit to inspire and lead us in this beautiful journey. Video. We are going to take a look today at conducting a synod on synod. So I invite you now, after uh, looking at this video, we will take one minute in silence again, so that you can think and write into the chat one takeaway from this video, maybe one word, one sentence something you take away from the video, 
for living synodality uh, in your diocese, in your parish, in your community. So I invite you now to take one minute and to think about that and to write into the chat one takeaway something uh, that struck you uh, with this video. Thank you so much for what you are sharing and what you take away and uh, what you, you share so that we through the what you express we are we can feel we are on this uh, journey uh, journey together. Um, so it would be good to to save the chat as it uh, it has been announced. So we continue uh, our reflection now after this video, uh, and you can see this image trying to express something of the importance of listening, because the Synodal Church is a listening church. And we are now living this uh, very important uh, moment, all together being uh, on this Synodal path. And uh, after, uh, you know, the former synod, so the synod on news that was in October 2018, then the synod on the Amazon. And through the, the, the experience of those two synods and the, the takeaways we can say from those two synods, the, the fruits, uh, we have been more and more um, convinced uh, that uh, truly synodality is the way of being the church today according to the will of God in a dynamic of discerning and listening together to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the way Pope Francis is stating that. But uh, we have truly understood through those two last synods that synodality is the way to transmit the faith today, to be the church today, and to continue uh, the unique mission of the church from the beginning, that is uh, to proclaim the gospel. But in the context of today, uh, we need to be faithful to uh, the mission of the church. We need to recover uh, and to foster this uh, synodal style. Uh, synodality expresses the nature of the church. It's form, its style, its mission, the, the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, the church is truly rooted into the Trinity, and synodality is linked and, and rooted uh, into the mystery of the Trinity, a mystery of communion, uh, and it's an understanding of the church coming from the ecclesiology of Vatican, uh, the Second Vatican Council, uh, looking at the people of God as a mystery or, or as a reality of communion, we are church all together, all are protagonists. No one can be considered a mere extra. It's to consider everybody in the church as subject. And um, so the, the, the issue is how to put that really into practice in all our uh, ecclesial uh, group event and uh, as as you can see it's it's an um, it, it's nothing new in a way uh, synodality was the style of the church at the for, at the beginning for the early church but then the history has emphasized more for many reasons 
a vision uh, of the church that was very uh, hierarchical, uh, juridical, and institutional. And through the Council Vatican II, that uh, was uh, uh, retour aux sources, that means it was a way to retrieve uh, the vision of the church from the beginning. Nowadays, we receive this, uh, we are in a new step of the reception of the Council Vatican II with Pope Francis that understand and receive the council and the vision of the ecclesiology of the council through this uh, vision of uh, synodality. And so the emphasis is on listening to the sensus fidei fidelium, that in the sense of faith of all the faithful with this uh, image that Pope Francis is giving to us, the, the call to reverse the pyramid that means to begin uh, and to return to the synodal process to begin with the listening of all the batailles as subject of the infallible sensus fidei in credendo, as it is stated in this uh, in Lumen Gentium, this very important uh, constitution of the church from the Council Vatican II to go beyond the image of, uh, where, uh, we can say, of a church rigidly divided into leaders and followers, those who teach and those who uh, are taught. Uh, because with this uh, integrating this uh, truth that the Holy Spirit is given to all, and is given especially to all the faithful together, uh, we need to, to understand more and more and to retrieve this vision of journeying together in a more horizontal, uh, horizontal way. And that's uh, the call for, uh, for this synod, to work together, to descend together. And so what is very important is that uh, you know, Pope Francis is looking at his own ministry as Pope, what we can call the primacy, and the collegiality of all the bishops together within a broader pattern of synodality. On this image, you, it was a, a painting uh, trying to figure the Council Vatican I, and you can see that the vision is mainly that the Holy Spirit is on the Pope. On the, on the primacy. But uh, with nowadays, with synodality, uh, we can, and it's another image to help us to understand what is synodality, it's about being together in a more circular way uh, with a style of fraternity, uh, or what we can sometimes say the Mate Church, you know, this drink from Argentina that. <laughs> Sorry, there is a problem. Or no? <laughs> uh, so it's uh, sometimes I say synodality begins with a coffee, with a cup of tea, with a meal. It's the style of being all together in the church as brothers and sisters in, in, in Christ. So uh, that's the road. And now, uh, you know, there is not a unique way to discern how to live that concretely in each local churches. And the call is that each diocese uh, through the synodal path will uh, discern how uh, already, and we look at what is already our experience of synodality and what is the next step the Holy Spirit is calling us to, to take to become more, uh, more synodal. So that's the, the road, uh, you know, opened and to, to live this synodality with all the church everywhere in the world. Uh, we have published like for each synod, a preparatory document and I really invite you to read it if you haven't read it yet. Uh, and the way this preparatory document is uh, draft, we can say, help us to 
to uh, understand how uh, we can uh, leave synodality and uh, we can say the methodology of the approach, it's first to begin with a, what we say a reading of the sign of the times. Uh, the vision of uh, synodality is a vision of an incarnated church. Uh, the synodal journey unfolds within an historical context. It's not to leave the synodality uh, on the moon, but what is truly your context in your diocese, uh, how you read the sign of the time, and uh, it's uh, at, at the same time a reading, uh, like in a mirror, uh, you know, the word of God. And that's why the, there is uh, an important part in the preparatory document also uh, about scriptures. And we give two biblical icons to help us to live, uh, to live this season. But what is understood is that within this context, with the sign of the time, we can uh, highlight synodality represents the main road for the church, called to renew ourselves under the action of the spirit and by listening to the world, with the idea to imagine a different future for the church, but not just to be uh, a better church as intra uh, as a community, but to be a prophetic witness to the human uh, family, which needs to be united around the common goal. So synodality is always a missionary synodality. It's a way of being church to serve the world of, um, of, of today. And uh, the, the, the challenge, we can say, is uh, to, to be renewed as a church, to live a new Pentecost, uh, and the synodality is a way to live an adjournment for a new impetus, and it's an event of grace, as Pope Francis has said in his speech uh, during the, the opening of the of the synod. So that's why we really emphasize uh, at the, the universal level, uh, you know, the importance of the prayer and, and living the synod uh, as a spiritual process rooted into uh, discernment, because it's a process of listening, of me to listening, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to discern together under the, the light uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit. So uh, I, I will finish this part, and, um, but I, I would like you really to highlight that the purpose of the Synod and therefore of this consultation that you are living and you, you will continue to live in your diocese is not so much to produce documents, even if we, we will need a synthesis at the level of the diocese and that at the national level, and then we will have a working document for the continental meeting, because uh, there are different steps in, in this synod. But the, the purpose is ready to plan dreams, to draw forth prophecies and vision, to allow hope to be nourished, inspire trust, bind up wounds, weave together relationships, awaken a dawn of hope, learn from one another, and create a bright resourceful net that will enlighten minds, warm earths, give strength to our earths. And why I want to share that with you, that's the final part of the preparatory document, because you can see here what are, in fact, the fruits of uh, synodality, the fruit of this uh, synodal process, and what we will try to live and discern. So uh, the, the challenge, as we have already said, is to put that in practice. And uh, that's why the aim of the synod is really to relearn or to learn synodality. And that's a process of rereading how we are already journeying together and practice. So this synod is like, uh, it's a call to to do some exercises of synodality, to, to have some listening session and to find ways 
to continue to learn synodality because no nobody and no, there is not uh, we are you know it's a learning by doing and a synodal church is a church in which we all learn from each other we haven't finished this uh, synodal uh, conversion uh, of, of the church so I really uh, wish that uh, through, through that we can continue to find the way to, to become more, uh, I would say, more synodal, uh, and especially, uh, you know, at uh, at the parish level, uh, at the level of the dioceses. Um, and when we speak about, in fact, about synodality at the universal, uh, from the universal church, but there is no church, the vision of the synodal church is a church of local churches, the church of local churches. That's why all this process really begins at the grassroots and will finish uh, within the local churches. So the most important uh, phase of the synod is now. It, it is in your diocese. It is in each uh, in each diocese that you are called to uh, to, to, to live and to implement uh, to implement that. With those three key words that Francis has uh, given us. Uh, during the celebration of the opening of the synod, and as I, they are like uh, key words to give us a kind of a roadmap for our synodal journey, encounter, listen, and discern, uh, so that we, uh, we, we can't speak about synodality without speaking about a culture of encounter, of dialogue. And one of the, a very important issue, uh, and Francis is highlighting that, the need today to foster a dialogue between the pastors and the faithful, and between the generation, uh, between uh, men and women. <laughs> you know, so it's truly to foster this dialogue and this culture of encounter, especially between pastors and um, and festival. So to invite you to continue the, the road, uh, we can say that we learn synodality, in fact, from Jesus he is the model of synodality. Uh, and especially we can um, we understand how to be synodal like Jesus with the, this um, image, or it's more like, like, it's like the road of Emmaus. What, Jesus is doing when he's uh, coming to walk with the disciple of Emmaus, he reaches them where they are in their walk, he begins to listen to them, and then he teaches them the scriptures and take time to celebrate uh, with them. So now to conclude and to uh, give you uh, also time for questions, uh, I would like uh, just to share and um, I go to the end of my uh, PowerPoint um, because I would like to share with you, uh, you know, uh, an overview <laughs> because uh, of how the synod is uh, taking place everywhere. Because here at the Secretariat of the Synod, it's um, we are blessed to listen to uh, a great variety of countries, of local churches, bishop conferences, dioceses. And uh, we have done many uh, Zoom sessions to listen to uh, all of the whole world, how the Synod is uh, already launched and what is happening. And uh, I would like uh, to give you this uh, echo <laughs> and those feedback from of how synodality is lived uh, all over the world. That means this uh, process of consultation focused on this fundamental question for the, funda for the consultation of the people of God, the synodal church in announcing the gospel journeys together, 
how is this journeying together happening today in, in your local church and what step does the spirit invite us to take in uh, in order to grow in our journeying together? And you know that this fundamental question is then uh, you can explore it through 10 teams that give us like 10 lenses to look at synodality in, in practice uh, through different aspects of the life of the, of the church. And uh, you can choose uh, through your listening process and you will have the guidance of course of your diocesan team and, uh, and reference on how to do this uh, uh, synodal, uh, synodal consultation. But it's just to give you a look of those 10 teams, companions on the journey, uh, because you can't speak about synodality without speaking uh, about how we journey together as people of God, but how we journey to get together with all the people of, on the earth. Uh, synodality goes and is intertwined with a way to walk with people from other faiths, with people who are non-believers, with other reality than the church. Through this style of listening, speaking out, it's also the importance of celebration. And you see that a key word for synodality is participation, co-responsibility. So it's good to look at how do we share responsibility for our common mission. Uh, the question of dialogue, ecumenism, so authority and participation, discerning and deciding. So uh, now I really want to, to, to conclude with this uh, overview of the synod in local churches, just to give you uh, uh, an idea and to help you to feel connected with all the dioceses uh, in the world. Uh, it's, uh, we have seen that almost all the dioceses around the world have launched the synod with a diocesan celebration. But of course, the synod takes place at different reasons in the different parts of the world. Some have already done many listening sessions, others are just begin. Almost all the bishop conferences have appointed a reference synodal team and so uh, are also uh, trying to animate uh, and to support and accompany the synodal diocesan team. Um, we are aware that uh, you know to, to live and, and to do this synodal conversion of the church, uh, it's not in one day, in two days, or even three or, or six months, or even two years. It's in fact uh, this synod as a timeline, and we have extended the diocesan phase and the national phase until mid August. But uh, things won't stop mid August. You know, it's, it's, it's a long process. We can say it's a process of transformation, of conversion for one generation. Um, and it's a way to feel a certain unity through this common global uh, universal synodal process, but mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, and that's the vision at the secretariat, this uh, synodal process has to be adjusted, adapted, uh, inculturated, we can say, in each uh, local reality. There is not one way to, to do. And it's good to see how the document has been also translated uh, into the local languages, uh, adapted according to the culture. So it's a call for you, uh, as we have seen all over the world, for creativity and local adaptations and to adapt also the resources. But we have already, I want to mention, I think it looks as if Sister Natalie uh, has frozen there, so I'll just see whether... 
Sometimes in our Western countries, it can be uh, more secularized also. It, it's not everywhere that there is such an enthusiasm. But it's, it's true and it's normal that there are also fears uh, different reaction because it's, it's something rather new. It's a call to change and wherever you have a call to change, you have some fears and resistance. That's part of the, of the process. But we can see that something is happening and uh, it's, it's, uh, there is a great wish and we really emphasize that in many places, listen to the purest and marginalized. Uh, and also, uh, and I know that in England, you have also this reality of uh, being a, a Catholic church among other churches, like the Anglican church or Protestant churches, but uh, there is a very important ecumenical dimension through this synod, because uh, really, uh, and Pope Francis emphasized that, uh, synodality is an ecumenical issue. It, it's through this, uh, uh, this path, it's also to find and to continue to find a way uh, to journey with Christians from other denominations. And we really invite, and we can see that all around the world, also to consult when it's possible or to dialogue for the synod with Christians from other uh, denominations because we have the same baptism. They are also part of the census feeding. And also the Holy Spirit is not only working into uh, the baptized, but uh, through also people uh, of goodwill. So there is also, and um, we can see the dimension of interreligious uh, dialogue. So uh, that's a kind of overview of what we can see in different parts of the world. And also we see very creative and interesting way to connect uh, and articulate uh, some, because some local churches like you have uh, already are doing a diocesan synod or a plenary council like in uh, Australia or uh, Latin America, they have just uh, finished uh, a process for all the church in Latin America with the Ecclesial Assembly of Latin America. And so it's, it's wonderful when you have already or you are planning to do uh, a synodal process like a diocesan synod, uh, it will it will uh, go in the same way as this uh, this synod, and it's good to find the way to uh, to articulate uh, to articulate that. So uh, to, to finish this overview, we can say that um, there is a lot already done to communicate about the synod because communication is an important issue to reach the people and involve them. And we can see also that uh, you know many lay people are very enthusiastic and want to be part of this synodal process. Religious life uh, generally uh, in all over the world is very well on board. And there is a great dynamic because religious have already a kind of natural uh, synodal um, way of proceeding through chapter, uh, through discernment in common, but also other lay movements, communities, uh, church organization are called and we, we see that they are already also uh, on board. So we can see, and that's my last word, that the synod is seen by many as a crucial moment for the church. And uh, I hope and I really wish that uh, in your diocese and for each of you, it will be truly an event of great of grace and a path of a new world uh, to uh, really receive and share more and more the joy of the gospel to be uh, or the more a missionary church uh, within a, an experience of communion with the participation of all. Thank you so much for uh, your um, 
this time together. And now I will be very uh, open to your questions, uh, proposals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Natalie. That's been very uh, informative. I'm going to follow your uh, excellent example and suggest maybe that if we just have a moment of silence, and then during that silence, uh, you can think of any questions that you might have. There's too many of us to be able to invite you to vocalize those questions. So instead, I'm going to invite you to put them on the chat and then uh, Sister Natalie will see them, I'll see them and uh, Hopefully, it will be an opportunity for, for some more learning. So just a moment of silence. Thank you, and do please type your questions as you go along. There's a couple of questions that are rooted in our own specifically diocesan journey, where for the past four years, we've been embarked on a process called Hope in the Future, working through so far four or five distinct stages. And a couple of people have asked uh, whether that will be interrupted or whether there'll be some conflict. Uh, we're aware of the risk of that, which is why uh, foremost in our planning, we're trying to ensure that that doesn't happen, that actually one feeds into the other. And the synodal journey is not something different. It's rather uh, a new way of going about things. So hopefully there'll be no conflict, there'll be no interruption, but all will work together. Yes, that's truly the vision, you know, that this proposal for the universal church is uh, the, the aim. It's, it's, it's to foster and to help to continue the, the path at the local level. So that's why it's not something else that will bother you or disturb a, a, a plan you have already, but it's, the aim is to find the way how this call for all the church, that is a call to be, uh, you know, to open the future <laughs> in a way to become more and more uh, a missionary church with this vision of communion and uh, how it can uh, bring fruit to what you are already living and trying to live. That's, uh, that's really the, the, the vision. So even if it's, it's a universal synod, it has to bear fruit at the local level for you. And, and you will find the way, uh, as you see, to, to connect what you are already doing and how this proposal can just help to foster uh, and to find, uh, you know, to continue to discern how to be uh, the church of God in your local reality. Please continue to post your questions, but just looking back at some of the comments, there is an anxiety there, Sister Natalie, about uh, whether what this will achieve, I suppose, and whether it might be to some extent marginalized. Yes, it's true. And I can say it's, it's normal, <laughs> as I say, that when you are, uh, and you can see that synodality is about it's a dynamic vision. It's to look at the, at, at the church and to understand the church as a, a people of uh, missionary pilgrims on the road. So it's to be a church on the move. Uh, you, you can't get stuck somewhere because the style of synodality is the style of discernment. Our world is, is truly a changing world. 
And we, we can't be the church today like in the Middle Age or uh, in the fourth century. We are not in the same context. We are the same church, but in a different context. We are called to be the same church, but in a different context. But uh, it, it, it's, it's no more that everywhere, you, as I said, you have a call for conversion, for transformation, for uh, you, you are going to the unknown. <laughs> and so you have, you have a kind of anxiety. But what, what helps, you know, is truly to see, and we can experience that in our life. Uh, we have been called, uh, you know, as baptized. We, all of us, we have a singular uh, vocation. And God always gives the grace to leave the call is uh, is uh, calling you. I, I I mean, when you receive and when you discern your vocation, uh, it's to listen to a call and to reply to this call. Uh, we can expect God never asks us something that is impossible. We can say, uh, I have been working in pastoral vocation during many years. So I often say, God gives the grace to what uh, is, is calling you. And if truly synodality, as, as it is stated and as it has been discerned, is the call of God for the church in the third millennium, we can be very confident <laughs> that even if we don't see exactly how it, it will happen, <laughs> But we can be very confident that God will continue to give us the grace to, to, to respond to this call and to live uh, this, uh, this style because it's a call of God. It's not just something, you know, coming like this, uh, I have this. No, it has been discerned as a call of God. So, um, that's why you can't live an, an, uh, uh, synodality, uh, you say, without being, uh, and that's a big issue for today, is to learn more and more, to, to be trained and to, to understand and to uh, what is discernment, personal discernment and common discernment. And, and discernment is about discerning in you what is happening and are you led by your fears or by your anxiety or are you led by the call of God that is speaking to you through what gives you joy, life, peace? Uh, and, and we have to discern that. So it's normal to have fears or anxiety, but uh, we have to discern what is truly the call of God and what is the enemy of God is trying to... Uh, to do to uh, so that we can continue uh, the, the journey together. Thanks, Sister Natalie. Any other thoughts, any questions? Uh, struck me, Sister Natalie, when you say, what are we led by our fears and anxieties or what gives us hope and life? And that seems to be key. Yeah. Father Paul, it says maybe just for me, it says chat's disabled, so it might work to ask people to put yeah. their hands up if they want to ask something. Chat's disabled? Yeah. How has that happened? John, you're the techie. How has chat been disabled? I'm not sure. I'll have a look now. Okay. Well, while that happens, I, I mean, we have to look at three, but please, uh, if you've got something to say, say it, and if two of you speak at once, then... One can give way to the other and will exercise a kind of uh, synodal way of listening. So if you've got something you want to say, a question, then ignore the chat and, and speak up. Ah, the chat is now open. Okay, so. Hopefully I can see you all typing. How do we promote a culture of servant leadership, uh, Sister Nathalie? 
Yes, thank you for this, uh, this, this question. I, I think, uh, and, and one of the key, as, as I say, for, uh, for synodality is if we really want to live, you know, this style of uh, being together as pilgrims uh, uh, to emphasize and sometimes to put it in a nutshell, I say synodality is passing from the I to the us. It's about looking uh, first uh, and, and understanding and living that we are first a community. Uh, of course, a community of uh, uh, individuals, but um, it's uh, you, you have to emphasize and you have put that into the chat, the togetherness. So uh, it's very, very important that the leaders, you know, and, and, and for synodality, you really need to emphasize teamwork and to learn to work uh, collaboratively. And the, the fact is that um, in, in many places in the church, for many reasons, we have inherited a, a way of exercising the responsibility or leadership, sometimes in a very personal way. Uh, but to, to recover and, and to understand synodality, it's a way understand and to lead to see that the pastors or those who have received a, a minister to exercise they are not apart from the from the community they are in the middle as the Pope Francis says the, the bishop is in the middle of the flock uh, breathing with them and um, with this idea that the, the the leader, we can say, of the bishop, the pastor, is not a bull with the power to, to exercise. The true understanding of leadership uh, within this synodal vision, but it's, it's a Christian understanding, and it, it is stated in the final document of the synodal news, and I like very much to quote that. It's about, it's, uh, you know, the servant leader is the one who is trying to uh, liberate the, the, the freedom, to help those who is, who is uh, trying to serve, to help them to grow, to grow in freedom, to grow in the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's not about, uh, you know, just to impose that. To, so um, the, the, the key, is to train people, you know, to train people to this servant leadership that is a collaborative leadership. And, and we need to continue to learn how to work together well as a team. That means a bishop with his council, a parish priest with also the council. We have already that kind of institution, but it's uh, the reality then is very diverse. And uh, we all have to, uh, I mean, to, especially those who have, uh, you know, received the, the call to be, to be leaders in, in different ways, we really need to, to, to be trained and to, to, to find the ways, uh, because it's not natural. <laughs> you, you, well, you have the grace, of course, of ordination, but it, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's a learning process to really uh, become a, a servant leader and a collaborative leader. Thank you, Sister Natalie. There's two questions that might go together. First of all, on the vocabulary, that synodalita is such a great sounding Italian word. Synodality isn't really uh, a very much used English word doesn't grab people. Is there a better word? And that, and related to that, surely there's a certain cultural shift in the, the Catholic way of doing things that is required to embed synodality. So the vocabulary and the cultural shift. Yes, it's true that um, so sometimes, you know, we say this synod is a synod on synodality, but uh, as I said, in a way, it's easy to understand synodality. It's 
churning together, working together, but the world itself is not easy to catch up. But uh, I think the best way to communicate about synodality are those three words uh, in, in the title, communion, participation, mission. Synodality is about that. It's communion, participation, mission. And it's rather easy, uh, I think, to understand communion, participation, mission. But the other thing, and uh, maybe I will share my screen uh, because I didn't have time to, uh, to share this part, but I will uh, give you my PowerPoint after. Uh, I think we need, uh, because you, you speak about the question of vocabulary, it's very helpful to use images to try to explain uh, what is synodality. The uh, first image that is given uh, to speak about synodality, it's coming from the Synodal News, uh, and it's, it's a very understandable <laughs> and easy image. It's to be together on the same canoe on the same boat. Uh, it's to look at the church uh, as a canoe in which, you know, uh, young people and elderly uh, uh, pastors and faithful are all together as a crew in, in the canoe. So that's, that's an image. But you have other uh, image. I have already shared with you the image of the invert pyramid the image uh, of the polyhedron coming you know, from Pope Francis. It's a way to look at the unity, the communion together, not as a kind of sphere you know, uh, with the, the same color, but uh, with this figure of the polyhedron, it's a vision of unity that doesn't uh, suppress all the differences, but that find a way to connect the differences and to put people together, like the logo we have, uh, you know, you, you, you have different colors, different size, but you have a unity, because unity is um, greater uh, than, uh, than division and, and than difference. A very simple way to speak about synodality, and everybody can understand that, it is the church as a family. Uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, ready with the spirit of um, fraternity. Uh, the road of Emmaus, I have tried to uh, give us a very good image also about what is synodality a new Pentecost, and there is another image interesting coming from the Bible, the tent of meeting, you know, in the Exodus, in which the Ark of the Covenant is preserved. Uh, it's also a quote from the final document of the Synodal News to express what is synodality, what is a synodal church. It's a dynamic church in movement, which accompanies while journeying, strengthened by many charism and ministry. So it's, it's to look at the church, not as a, you know, a, a fixed structure uh, in stones, but as a tent of meeting with the style of, uh, you know, uh, of encounter, of meeting with God, but open and journeying uh, on the road. And the last image also I, I like uh, that came uh, also from uh, uh, the Synodal News. Uh, young people who attend the Synodal News at the end said, but finally what I have understood, synodality is like a dance together. Uh, a dance together. Not everybody is doing exactly the same thing, but it's a dance together uh, and listening to the sound of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so that's, you know, some examples help us and you will find other images. The last image I discovered, uh, I was very interested uh, because uh, the abbot primate of the sister science was attended also uh, two or three synods and he was talking about the synod and he gave the image of synodality and of the synodal process it, he is saying, you know, it's like the restoration of uh, an old painting of art. 
So it's you, you, when you restore a painting or a church, you know, you, you, you retrieve the original colors, the light that were already there. And that's to me, this path of synodality is about that. It's to, to retrieve the colors of, uh, of the gospel, of the, what is truly the church. Thanks, Sister Natalie. Again, just bringing a couple of questions, relating them together. Uh, there's always a risk that when we consult any group of people, particularly, for example, if we consult parishes, that they will simply say what they want more of. You know, and also uh, linking in with that, there are communities that feel excluded uh, from the church. There are divisions within the church about how to work with and welcome, for example, members of the LGBT plus community. How will the Synod uh, address both of those? Well, what we have tried to, uh, to say, and, and you know, it's, uh, it's truly a focus of the Synod. Uh, as you say, there are many different kind of groups who could feel, who feel they are uh, excluded or marginalized uh, and according to the different realities, it could be different kind of groups. Uh, so th there is really the, the will, and we say, uh, you know, if possible, we have to listen to them, you know, to, to listen to them, because a, a synodal church is an inclusive church in which uh, everybody finds he has a, a voice, a place, and so it's very important to um, uh, really to, to, to try to involve them and to listen to them. The, 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 we have different kind of groups, the, the key, and sometimes the difficulty is that it's to invite people uh, to express what they want to express and to say to the, to the church, you know, but with this time, of listening and this style of discernment and uh, this style of being rooted into prayer. If what is difficult is that if you have some groups who are acting, you know, like in a parliament with a kind of lobbying or activism, and they just want to impose uh, their ideas and not listen to the author, it's not synodality. So to be open to synodality is truly to, to have the courage to say what you feel, what you discern, what you want to say, uh, but also the courage, well, the humility to listen to the other and to know that nobody alone has the truth. Uh, and so that's why you can't speak and be part of the synodal process without an opening uh, to be converted. If you don't want to change, if you feel your group, your own group has all the truth, you can't really uh, enter uh, into this. So to, to, to become synodal and to do synodality, you need to have this spiritual attitude of humility, of listening, of uh, seeking for the truth that you don't have already. Uh, but we really insist on the importance really to listen to everybody included and first, us to put at the center the listening of the poor, of the smallest, of those of the voiceless, and those who, from the peripheries or the margins who feel excluded for different kind of, uh, of reason. Thank you, Sister Natalie. Maybe bringing everything to a conclusion uh, with a final question. Uh, there's two questions that have been received, one of which is a question to me about how uh, we can be part of both the universal synodal journey and also where that might take us as a diocese, which I'll, men I'll speak to uh, in a few moments. But also, Sister Natalie, you're being asked, uh, this is a relearning for the whole church. Do you happen to have any idea what Pope Francis thinks will be the next step after this? And then secondly, uh, with this great listening that we're being asked to do, 
there are people within our church congregations we can sit you know in front of somebody for years without knowing their name how do we hear their hopes and fears uh, i would say for your first question that uh, you know we are truly in this first phase to listen and we we have no idea, and I don't think Pope Francis also has any idea of what could be the next step. Because if you already know, that means you don't begin to listen. So for the moment, we and I can really say that as the secretary of the synod, we have tried, you know, to, to help to start the, the synod, but we we are truly trying to listen. That's why I'm very happy also to be with you uh, tonight. And, 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 and uh, because we don't know in advance what will come from the synodal uh, consultation. So uh, we are waiting. <laughs> and then there will be, you know, each step is a process of discernment. So we can't say anything for the moment about what will be the output or uh, the, the, the next step. And uh, I am really experiencing that here, and, and I can, I can uh, testimony about that, that it's, it's you know, uh, this, it's truly a learning process, and we go step by step. <laughs> we can't, uh, you know, we can't really plan what is, will happen exactly and what will be the content that will arrive from all this listening from all over the world. It's, it's not yet uh, a draft. And, and uh, it's very important because some people sometimes say, uh, you know, the conclusions are already written. It's no, <laughs> not at all. It, it, it's truly, and, and that was also my experience at the Synodal News that gave me a lot of hope. I can truly say that because you know I have been involved in youth ministry for 30 years, uh, listening to the young people who have tra transformed me. So, and I can truly say that at the synodal news, uh, especially through the voice of the synodal fathers, I was hearing the voice of the youth. And uh, and so we can say the the, the aim is that the, the the bishops, those who will be gathered in Rome in uh, October 2023, and Pope Francis then will, uh, you know, bring the voice uh, of the of all the faithful that is raised now through this uh, synodal consultation. Thank you, Sister Natalie. And just to respond to the question about how uh, all of us can be involved in this stage. Uh, in our diocese. First of all, actually, is to have conversations with people about it and reflect on the questions yourself and pray about them, submit your responses, gather together in groups, submit your responses. There may be things happening in your parishes, there may not. Uh, don't be disheartened where things don't seem to be happening, but actually all the materials for reflection and prayer are on the internet, on the website, uh, you know, draw other people's attention to them, solicit their responses and uh, feed all of that in. At the end, we've asked in the diocese for, thing, for comments to be in by the beginning of March in order that we can compile, compile the response that goes to the Bishop's Conference. That response that we send uh, will be placed, will be shared uh, with all of you, as we will be the largest summary of the responses. And all of that and everything that's said will feed into our own diocesan listening journey as we seek uh, to, to engage in the next stage. So, you know, everything that is said is of value. Uh, and the more people that you can talk to about the Synod and get them reflecting, then uh, the better the whole process will be. Does that kind of make sense? Just get out and get talking, okay? Thanks, Sister Natalie, and uh, going to hand over to Bishop John. Thank you. I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of us, Sister Natalie, when I uh, thank you for your time 
and for all that you've said to us this evening. You've a great deal of experience and a knowledge about the Synod for us. And I think that um, Pope Francis is being really prophetic in asking each and every one of us to take part in listening and discerning what God may be asking of us and asking of the church in these days. So from a practical point of view, I think let's all of us be sure to invite those around us to take part, particularly those who may feel distanced from the church. We've got a lot to learn from them. And uh, you've certainly shown us that the Synod is nothing like a debate or an argument to be won or lost. And uh, in this fast changing world with its global challenges, the pandemic, climate change, conflict and political division, and the increasing poverty, how can the church respond and ensure the dignity and well-being of all our brothers and sisters and the health of our common home? And in this synod and in the synod in the diocese which will follow it, we can learn much about our own diocese and how we may live the gospel where we are in our local church. So thank you to everybody who's taken part in this evening and let's journey together uh, in, in prayer and listening and be a missionary church in our world. Thank you. And maybe Bishop John, would you end with uh, praying God's blessing on us all? And may almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And have a safe journey home, everyone. <laughs>